Uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, this is the part 2 on the uh, enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. Uh, if I give you a recap of the previous video, in the previous video I've told you that ELISA which is also known as the EIA uh, is a plate based assay technique which is designed for detecting and quantifying substances such as the peptides, the proteins, antibodies and hormones in the sample. And I've told you that in the uh, ELISA, we are using an antibody conjugate in which an enzyme that has been conjugated uh, to an antibody and that conjugated enzyme is acting on a colorless substrate and when it acts on it, it actually gives you uh, a colored product and the substrate, they are known as the uh, chromogenic substrates. Uh, the uh, most common enzymes that are used uh, in ELISA, they were the alkaline phosphatase, the horse radish for oxidase and the beta galactosidase and they were utilizing a uh, different kind of the substrate uh, which were hydrolyzed by these enzymes to give you a colored end product and the uh, light absorption of the colored end product uh, that was actually uh, detected at 450 nanometer. Uh, then I give you the uh, concept of the direct and indirect in the context of the ELISA and I've told you that uh, in the ELISA you can use this term direct and indirect with respect to the attachment and you can use this uh, term direct and indirect uh, with respect to the uh, detection as well. And then we uh, classified the ELISA uh, based on the concept of the uh, direct and indirect attachment and direct and indirect detection uh, into four types. And then uh, I told you the uh, different steps that are involved in the uh, process of the ELISA and we uh, discussed that in detail. Uh, if you have got a confusion, you can uh, see my previous video for a detailed discussion on the different steps that are involved in the process of ELISA. Now in this particular video, I want to focus uh, that uh, how you are going to say that your sample is positive for your antigen or your protein of interest or that is a negative for your uh, target. So uh, on the left side, I'm showing you a positive sample and on the uh, right side, I'm showing you uh, a negative sample. So first we'll focus uh, that which kind of the samples they are considered as positive and then we will discuss that which kind of the samples they are considered negative when you have completed the uh, steps of the ELISA. So uh, what you do is that in the uh, first step, we will focus on the positive sample first. So what you do is that in the first step, you are going to add the capture antibody or your primary antibody to the uh, surface of the uh, micro titer plate. Uh, in the next step what you do is that you will be blocking all of the free sites and we discussed that in detail in the previous video that if you are not going to block the uh, empty sites on the surface of the micro titer plate that can actually give you a uh, false results. So in the second step what you will be doing is that you will be blocking all of the available sites after the binding of the capture antibody so that the false results they can be uh, avoided. <laughs> Now in the third step, what you do is that you will be adding your sample and if the uh, antigen or your target, if that is present in your sample, that is going to bind to the uh, antibody over here. Here I'm showing you that the antigen of interest that is present in, in the sample and that antigen uh, is the, it can interact with this particular antibody, so it had interacted over here. Uh, in the previous video, I've told you that one of the important things to keep in mind about ELISA is that you have to go for the washing steps. Uh, uh, the, you have to go for the washing after each and every step so that uh, to uh, increase the specificity of the results. So what you do is that when you add your sample, your antigen get attached to its uh, antigen uh, due to its antibody. You are going for washing to remove all of the unwanted materials that are present in your sample. So you are going to uh, unbound uh, the samples when you are going to wash it all of the unbound samples that will be washed away and only the uh, antigen of interest that will remain in the well. And now next what you do is that you are going to add the uh, antibody uh, enzyme conjugate and the antibody enzyme conjugate I've told you that is actually an antibody that has been attached to an enzyme. Now as this particular antibody, uh, it, is, uh, it can interact with this particular antigen. That means that when you add the secondary antibody, uh, the uh, secondary antibody is again uh, going to interact with this particular uh, antigen of interest. 
when you have added your secondary antibody what you have to do is again you have to go for the washing so that any unbound secondary antibody enzyme conjugate that is washed away and you get the uh, specified results uh, when the secondary antibody that has been bound and when you add uh, the uh, Kadrade substrate, the enzyme is going to act on it and that is going to give you uh, a colored product. So the production of the color is, uh, usually indicates that the sample that is positive. Now let us focus on the uh, negative results. Now. Uh, just like the uh, the previous uh, steps that we discussed, the first step uh, in the negative samples, that will be the uh, addition of the primary antibody to the well. The second step, you will be blocking all of the available sites. Uh, in the third step, you are going to add your sample. And as you can see over here, as in the sample, your antigen of interest is not present. That means nothing is going to bind to the primary antibody. So when you are, when you are going for a washing step, all of the sample that will be excluded from the well and there will be nothing bound to this particular antibody. Now in the uh, next step what you do is that you will be adding the uh, enzyme conjugate or the antibody enzyme conjugate but as you can see over here uh, this uh, enzyme conjugate or the antibody enzyme conjugate that will react with the antigen and as the antigen is not present that means there will be nothing available for this antibody to bind to it. So when you, uh, when you go for the washing steps all of the secondary antibody enzyme conjugate that will be washed away because the uh, antigen that was responsible for binding to this uh, uh, antibody enzyme conjugate that is not available so in the washing step all of the uh, enzyme conjugate that will be removed from the well now if you add the substrate for the enzyme so as the enzyme that is not present that means that particular colorless substrate will remain colorless and that will not be converted it into a color product so in this particular case you are not getting any kind of the color so it actually tells you that the uh, results that are negative what I mean by positive and negative over here is that if uh, we say that our sample is positive that means that our antigen of interest is present in the sample and if we say that our sample is negative that means our antigen of interest is not present in the sample therefore you are not getting any kind of the uh, results so if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and share it with your friends. And in the next video, uh, we'll be talking about the uh, competitive ELISA, which is one of the uh, important types of the ELISA.